Smith is the first division's top goal scorer, but believe it or not, Norwich haven't won at home for seven weeks despite flex form. They have managed, though, to retain top spot. Well, manager Dave Stringer recalls Robert Rosario to part the flag today, conscious he needs more height and attack to pose a threat to Arsenal's towering centre-backs, Steve Bold and Tony Adams. As for Arsenal, George Graham has decided against bringing back Paul Davis, who's now completed his nine-match suspension, so Kevin Richardson continues in midfield. The referee Kelvin Wharton hasn't had to come far today from just across the Suffolk border from Bury St Edmunds. Arsenal in second place start the game attacking the river end. Norwich City in their familiar yellow and green strip. Arsenal, of course, in the famous red and white. And the first free kick of the game goes straight away to the Arsenal, as they know. And it's midway inside the Norwich half. Brian Marwood slipping it to his right to Lee Dixon who put in the cross inside the penalty area we were talking about the height earlier and Merson cracked it in and it was against his old man his old man Stephen Bold there in very quickly then and Rosario Phelan near cross to Rosario straight to Tony Adams who's giving it away to Robert Fleck though but he can't find Trevor Putney on that far touch line Robert Fleck hasn't scored in the last seven games there, so he'll definitely be looking for one today. There's a fortunate ricochet into the path of Rosario. Bold has settled in very well indeed since his summer move from Stoke City. by Smith finding Rowcastle who will take the return ball from Merson cutting inside the penalty area this looks dangerous it's a question of uh, too many cooks there though for Arsenal Putney has been quite heavily sanded which you might be able to detect from that picture as Arsenal drill the long ball looking for Smith knocks it back and Merson inches away from an opener that was a lovely move and it showed the power and height and strength of Alan Smith to perfection here the ball drilled forward by Lee Dixon Smith getting up so well deflects it back into the path of Merson just a few feet wider that upright it's a good long kick to Kerr. and Rosario doing well to give Fleck a chance inside that penalty area and it required all Tony Adams' expertise to get it away. Spectacular little kick from Rowcastle. Paul Merson has been in the thick of things early on, an injury, a shot just wide, and now failing the sternness of referee Morton's tongue. So they'll be looking for the head of Rosario here, and here he is with Bold inevitably. Now Richardson again finding Smith. 
there's going to be great similarity in the styles of these two sides looking for the big number nines now they find Smith on the ground good challenge from Gordon winning the ball for Norwich Phelan forward Appreciating the quickness of the tactical there. Certainly both sides well keyed up for this. As you'd expect of a match between first and second in the top division in English football. And that'll be a free kick for Norwich. Once more, it's been conceded by Bold. running over it and the flat cross and uh, there's a bad header because it's found Rosario on this side of the penalty area so Phelan can swing another cross in and Gordon's header just directed over the top and a question mark against the central defenders there and found him with some ease and in considerable space and it was Rosario leaving it for Phelan the cross is curled over and Dale Gordon just getting a little underneath it Roadcastle just getting a little flick on the ball there, but it's fallen into the camp of Norwich. And it's going to be fuddled back yet again to John Lukic. He's seen a lot of the ball, but without having to make any serious stops. Smith, Merson and Roadcastle now. Drift in field, which is where he's dangerous. Has to turn the other way though and locate Dixon. Useful cross and Smith's in with a header straight at gun. That's where he's so lethal. But he couldn't just get the angle. It took a deflection as Dixon put the cross in. Here Smith soaring high, firm header straight at gun. Concedes a free kick against Roadcastle. Over exuberant in the challenge. And it's Dixon. And a strong header from Adams. And uh, Gunn almost made a bit of a hash of that. The penalty awarded by the referee. Despite the Norwich protestations, Brian wants to know why. And Brian Gunn really made a bit of a hash of this. Dixon floats it across. Adams gets in a very strong header indeed. Bold is challenging for it here. Gunn catches Marwood there as he attempted to fist that ball away. And referee Morton had no hesitation. And it's a penalty for Arsenal. That was a tragic mistake, really, by Brian Gunn. There should have been no danger to him, really. Lewis was on him to get the ball away, and so Brian Marwood steps forward. The England wingman wins the battle. Arsenal take the lead. Marwood shows his joy. And that was a goalkeeping catastrophe for Brian Gunn. But now have a moment, referee Wharton has decided we've got to go through it all again. Well, everything's happening here all of a sudden. Marwood 
tucking it away. Gunnar moved, he moved the wrong way. But an Arsenal player had moved inside the circle. Referee Morton saw that. So controversy at Carrow Road. And referee Morton is saying stay out this time. So Marwood's got to do it all over again. Which side is he going for? This time he's smashed it straight over the top of the crossbar. Well, he must feel absolutely distraught about that. The Norwich fans are delirious. And Arsenal will feel that they've really lost out here. Marwood unsettled, obviously, by having to take the penalty a second time. Hoofs it straight over the crossbar. And he can't believe it, I don't think. He's having a word with the referee now. But there was no doubt in the referee's mind that a player had encroached at the first penalty. And the gun equally, you might say, had moved before the whistle had been blown. And before Marwood took the kick. And all of a sudden, the game has come to life through a rather bizarre incident. It's a triple incident, really, the giving away of the penalty. The first one going into the net, and then the second one going into the crowd. And all that's happened within six minutes of the interval. Brought the crowd into a bit of a roar now. And Norwich will come looking here. Rosario forward, but uh, they're offside. And the free kick in any case had been awarded to Norwich City. So that's why Putney's smiling. It's nice to see Lukic is smiling. He sees the funny side of it too. His turn and the ball hooked forward towards Linnigan and it drifted just in front of him. Goal kick. the whistle so half time arrives with the scores all square but I imagine that Norwich goalkeeper Brian Gunn is breathing a little bit heavily after he conceded the penalty and uh, Brian Marwood at first slotted it away and then when it had to be retaken put it straight into the crowd over the top of the crossbar so half time here at Carrow Road after a rather frenetic battle is Norwich City nil, uh, Arsenal nil. We're going to take a break now, but don't forget coming up the climax to Snooker's World Match Play Championship between John Parrott and Steve Davis and the second half here at Carrier Road. See you in a moment.
martini extra dry. It's there to be discovered. Mum, it's Melvin. Look, I'm afraid we're going to be late. You're going to be late? He's going to be late. Sister's never late. Your father says your sister's never late. She got more consideration. I've got to work. He's got to work. I'll tell you this. They're working you too hard. They're slave drivers, those people. I'll be an hour. I'll come down. I'll bring you a sandwich. Your father will run me. I don't you want run a sandwich. me. sandwich. Eat there. No sandwich. I'll bring you a jumper. I don't want a sandwich. I don't want a jumper. This is a modern air-conditioned building. It's never easy explaining why you're late, but a call shows you care. You never told me it was air-conditioned. Why would I tell you? Melvin, some children talk to their parents. Now, what do you want in your sandwich? I got that matured Canadian cheddar that you like. I wish I'd known. I haven't got a lot in. Still, thanks for the call. British Telecom. It's you we answer to. These manufacturers sell a million machines every year. Each manufacturer has staked his reputation on being able to give you the cleanest possible wash. They have one vital component in common. This one. Aerial Automatic. The vital component installed in a million new machines every year. Get more at Gilmore's with Hotpoint. Up to £60 off Hotpoint washing machines at Gilmore's, Lisburn Road, Belfast. Late opening Thursday and Friday. Forty-five minutes to go then and Norwich resume attacking the River End. As we still await the first goal of the game. But Dave Stringer, the Norwich manager in the programme, said that the defeat at Aston Villa last week didn't mean to say that that was going to be the end of Norwich's run at the top. There will be no collapse, he said. We're too good a side for that. Well, remains to be seen. Again, does well. Feeling charges into the action. Was he brought down there? He was, yes. So it will be a free kick to Norwich in a rather uncomfortable position for Arsenal. And they're throwing everybody forward now. They've only left one defender, Culverhouse, back. And it would be such a boost to Norwich if they could get the first goal of the game. Their home form has been so much better this season than it was last when they were beaten here eight times. Well, they're coming looking now, and the downward header didn't have enough power to beat Lukic. At least it gave the Norwich fans, massed behind that goal, something to cheer about. So, drifted in by Gordon, and there was the header, which didn't count. And straight back with Merson for Arsenal. He finds Roadcastle, first time cross. Not a good one, it was away, Richardson hammers it in, he didn't get any impetus into the shot. of the crowd didn't seem to agree with that decision but the free kick has gone to Arsenal taken by Winterburn Smith's up there back for Merson he's not getting any power at all behind those shots but they certainly won't trouble gun Held the ball with his hand. 
which produces the latest in a long line of free kicks for Arsenal. Well, actually won here last season by four goals to two. They did the double over Norwich last season. They're coming looking again here now as Rowcastle takes the ball away and there's a chance for Alan Smith who seemed to tread on the ball as a result of which Bowen got across to cover the mistake. And Smith just needed a fraction too long then. A quick shot might have uh, produced something. Now Brian Gunn and Brian Marwood seem to exchange anything but pleasantries then. It's anyway, the corner has been given. And so Marwood across Gunn getting a fist to it. There's nothing wrong there, so play continues with Dixon. Down the line, intelligent ball. Marwood with another chance to cross it. Gun off the line, safely caught. Around about half an hour left for anybody to break the deadlock here. It's a fairly equal contest. Again, they're asking Marwood to hustle uh, Linigan, which he did successfully, and so Arsenal perhaps enjoying the better of the latter moments. Smith, Linigan not very far away, Merson, he can't really turn there. Well won by Adams. And again, it's hacked forward and Marwood's inside that penalty area and solid defending from Andy Linigan. And again, it's Arsenal winning the ball. Rocastle, this looks dangerous. Cross for Smith and Smith stretches and balloons it over the top. Well, he's got the predator instincts which normally might have produced the goal in that situation. He gets in all right. It's a good little cross. Rowcastle making the initial inroads inside the penalty area, and he did well to get a cross in at all. Smith stretches, but can't keep the shot down. Richardson now. Merson has rushed into that. That's a good ball forward for Thomas, who's inside that area. He's got Smith. If he can cut it back to him, it's a chance here for Merson, and he's drilled it just towards that inside of the upright, and a fine save by Brian Gunn. Wilson was cool enough. Thompson. Thomas makes a good run inside the area. Flicks it back. Merson waits for his moment. And it wasn't a powerful shot, but Gunn still had to spread himself. Norwich escape again. But Arsenal have the chance again with Marwood. To put Norwich under more pressure. And then the ball is lost. Phelan. For Fleck, who's got no support at the moment, so Fleck's going to have to run and try and get past Dixon. Bundled over by Dixon, that referee Morton, I think, might well reach for the first yellow card of the afternoon here. Fleck absolutely flattened by Lee Dixon. He had to take them on by himself because there was just no support when the break was made. Fleck using all his speed, Dixon getting across, and that's where he took the player out and earned himself a caution. Well, despite all the free kicks in promising situations, there have still been no goals in the game. That's what the Norwich crowd are baying for now, as Gordon floats it over, and Lidinger got in, and it came off the back of another player and landed in the hands of John Lukic. Smith controlled it well, loops it across to the edge of the area. Norwich survive. But now Marwood gets on the end of Richardson's pass. And then they'll look again for Smith, and here he is, controls it first time. And it struck the foot of Bowen. And that was a good effort from Smith. He deserved better reward, really. Bowen stretched that leg, and the keeper didn't have to make the save. Now Putney, and all of a sudden there's more urgency about the game.
Here's Bowen in the attacking guys. And it was the final ball where the quality was lacking. But Rosario wins it back for Norwich. Ball from Linigan, and that started things going again. A bit of a hum here about this Norwich attack as Culverhouse has the chance to swing the cross in, and it's away by Adams. And he had to intervene then. It's only Norwich's second corner of the game, but they're massing up there just inside and on the edge of the Arsenal penalty area. Lukic dancing up and down on the line. And it was bowling first. Really as far as feeling now. in midfield now, a bit of space to run into, this is where he's dangerous, finding Rowcastle. They control that Rowcastle down there, and now he tries to win back the ball and does so illegally. did find Rosario, he in turn finds Putney and they're keeping it coming forward now Bowen might again look for Rosario on that far side of the penalty area, Rosario just couldn't control it after it had gone above Tony Adams who walks away head down, he knows that his mistake could well have cost Arsenal but Rosario just couldn't control it at the crucial moment header out by Butterworth who got a bit of a knock on the head as he did so so Rowcastle here well, that's, oh, it nearly caught gun out, I thought, for a moment. <laughs> it didn't look a very intelligent thing for Rowcastle to have done, but I wonder if he almost spotted gun off his line here. He just seemed to aim it aimlessly forward, and gun really had to stretch at the last moment. And it's going to be uh, an Arsenal substitution. Paul Merson is the player who's going to be replaced. So it's one striker for another, with Martin Hayes being introduced. Good round of applause for Mercer. And here comes Hayes. And Robert Fleck has also left the field. And Welsh international Malcolm Allen, there he is, number 14, is on for Norwich City. So both sides playing their cards. Allen, who came into the side when Rosario was injured. He was now back playing alongside him. Free kick there is against Smith. Well, Gunn's kicking has improved in this second half. And here's Gordon, he's offside. <laughs> oh, and the back flick from Butterworth puts his own defence under some pressure. Smith as well, Rowcastle now. There's the cross, here's Smith, 
Over the top again, but uh, got a deflection. So Alan Smith is uh, a sniper extraordinaire this season. He's had two or three attempts at goal without making one count as yet. An encouraging moments here for Arsenal as Marwood takes Arsenal's corner. Coming back for Thomas. Oh, and it nearly crept in, and it was off the line in the end by Bowen. That was an awkward one for the goalkeeper. He must have been having palpitations as that one dribbled towards the line. Good moments, these, for Arsenal. Nervous ones for Norwich. Dixon takes the ball back from Marwood. There's his cross this time, it's away. Hayes couldn't turn. Norwich were really living dangerously here. Butterworth got the ball away as far as Thomas. He sort of toe-poked it in, and it almost went off feeling inside his own net. Butterworth's free kick. Round about the penalty spot. Gordon nodding it on. Rosario. A few uh, Norwich appeals, but they were a little half-hearted, hoping for a penalty there. Richardson. Hayes is out there, but Butterworth there first, and the back pass. Oh, didn't have as much pace on it as Gunn would have liked. Now, is there a sting in the tail from Norwich City? Allen will run at Adams, cuts inside him. Malcolm Allen could make himself a hero here, but John Lukic spreads that huge frame of his to deny Allen. Well, the scoreline remains 0 0. Well, it's a fair reflection, really. Well, the side has probably deserved to win this one, but Arsenal are looking now. So it's the turn of the Norwich supporters to be a little bit worried, if anything, that Arsenal can conjure up a last-minute winner. Smith here, just outside the area, Rowe Castle. Three men surrounding him, Smith with the cross. He's away by Phelan, appropriately, he's had a good game. As we've gone into injury time in the match here at Carroll Road. And indeed... There is the final whistle blown by referee Morton. So it's status quo at the top of Division 1. Norwich City retain their two-point advantage over Arsenal. It's been a rather frantic game. Neither side at the end was able to squeeze out the one goal which always threatened to win it. So the final scoreline here at Carrow Road. Norwich City nil, Arsenal nil. Brian, an eventful game for you, obviously, and we've got to talk about the penalty incident. I mean, how did you see it? Well, obviously, um, I mean, the decision I thought was a very good decision. I mean, uh, uh, the keeper, there's no need to sort of bring me over. I mean, the ball's probably going out wide for a, for a goal kick, and he's come and sort of failed me. So the incident warranted a penalty. Um, obviously, I'm concentrating on trying to put the ball in the back of the net, and as far as I was concerned, I scored a perfectly good goal. Then he pulled me back to say that um, two or three of our players had gone in the box. Um, and then obviously I missed the, uh, missed the resulting penalty. But it's just very annoying that um, the consistency of it all is that uh, one week they will give that and then the next week they won't give it. You know, So it's very, very um, disappointing for players, when, uh, especially for penalty takers, when something like that happens. There's the inconsistencies. Uh, some, if you look at penalties, you'll see the uh, players from both sides and most penalties are in or in, a, in and around the edge of the box. Uh, I think if, if the player scores directly, I don't think it makes any difference whether the players are just, just inside. If the keeper parries it and somebody's been inside the box and actually finishes it off for a goal, then I think it should be disallowed. But it'd be interesting to see on television if in the second penalty there was anybody inside the box, whether the referee would have given a third penalty. It's certainly an interesting point, and as we freeze the action here, you can see that at the moment of impact from Marwood's kick, there is nobody actually encroaching inside the penalty area. The referee has his eyes on the spot, but there are bound to be inconsistencies over the entire season. 
two weeks ago we had a penalty awarded against us at Everton that we felt was a bad one. Uh, I said at that time that things even themselves out over the season and perhaps this is our little bit of uh, luck this time. Uh, you have to ride those sort of things. Uh, we accept those sort of things when they come either way. And this day it, uh, it helped us. You said in your programme notes today that everybody is waiting for you to be toppled off your perch. Well, I think that's quite true uh, by the way that the uh, press has looked at our uh, position and thought that we are pretenders to the throne, if you like, and thought that our uh, stay wouldn't uh, be very long. But we've sustained it. We've stayed there now for uh, nearly half the season. So really, uh, we're there on merit. Uh, we'll get games as we did today. And throughout the season, you get those sort of things. And hopefully, uh, we'll fight our way through it and uh, get the points that we, we require. So Arsenal for the second week in succession unable to move to the top. With Millwall also stumbling, they lost 2-0 at Spurs. The most positive move was made by Coventry. They beat Manchester United thanks to this goal 10 minutes from time. Well, Houchin diverted it away. Speedy anticipated. He gets it back. And a goal! Cyril Regis. It's been a long wait and they were beginning to run out of hope. Manchester United couldn't deal originally with the corner. And when it came back, Regis there before Houchin with a thumping header. Textbook stuff. So that's how the top of the table looks tonight, but of course Liverpool could change things tomorrow. And in the match live, it is the Merseyside derby. Liverpool against Everton at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on ITV. He was knocked down by a car in the street. He lost four months out of the game with a broken leg and never made the grade at Goodison. Leonard is in a side unchanged despite losing 4-0 to Manchester City on Saturday. They've been working on ways to beat Everton's formidable offside trap with fullbacks Brian Mitchell and Lee Sinnott, key players in that respect. Sinnott, who's faced Everton before for Watford in the 1984 FA Cup final. Wayne Clark has now joined Graham Sharp on Colin Harvey's casualty list. So after three months out with knee trouble, back comes Pat Nevin, whose Everton career began so promisingly in the opening matches of the season. The referee is a jeweler from Whitley Bay, Ken Redford. Ground receipts from a crowd of around 15,000 close to capacity means a record payday for Bradford, whatever happens over the next 90 minutes. Everton kick off. Nine league and cup games unbeaten. Fresh from a very encouraging draw at Anfield on Sunday, while Bradford City have been floundering in the second division and are hoping to find the break from the league routine. Something to encourage players who are a little short on confidence. Ian Snowden, who scored the winner for Everton the last time they were here, in an FA Cup tie almost two years ago. He's playing it right back, his new role. Trevor Stephen. Roswell. and giving every indication here of having settled quickly. Hooked out by Banks. The prize, a place in the quarterfinals, a home tie against third division, Bristol City. So for the winners of this one, a genuine chance of getting all the way to the semi-finals. Mitchell. As far as Vanden Howe. Hamilton squeezing Bradford City back. In front of the cop end, Valley Parade. The goal kick to be taken by Paul Tomlinson. Ormond Royd, who really made a nuisance of 
himself then. Angular, six foot four inches tall, and very highly rated by the manager Terry Dolan. Snowden. Switching the point of attack to Vanden Howe. Watson. Oh, Cotty might get that. There was hesitation at the back by Bradford in. Wilson is in there as well. Still Cotty is the danger. Ratcliffe very tight on Ormond Roy. The style of defending that was absent at the other end. And Bradford City were trying to deal with Cotty. Brian Mitchell with the throw. Evans, who is the free player at the back, and three man centre defence for Bradford City. Norman Droid. Everton being allowed to play it easily at the back, pick their passes, although that wasn't the best from Vanden Howe. And they're not really being harassed and put under pressure in the way you would expect. Facing aside from a lower division. Not an easy fixture, this on paper. It's been a most comfortable start. Kennedy trying to change that with the, his brand of all-action style. And he just squared up to Ian Wilson for a moment. Nevin. Bracewell was holding Banks. Problem for Bradford City. David Evans limping towards the ball then. He's made a gesture towards the bench to get the substitutes warmed up. But Evans moving over the ball. Taken by Jackson. Ormond Droid and Leonard! Mark Leonard! They always knew he could score goals, but in his two years. Goodison Park. He never really got the chance in the first team, but he flicked it on from Ormondroyd's first header and over Southall. And against the run of play, totally, the second division side are in front. The planning so much geared to Ormondroyd's height and well read by Leonard to make the second header. Meanwhile, Ian Wilson has added to Everton's problems with an injury. quality replacement, Kevin Sheedy. Bracewell. Cotty. Tomlinson will have to prevent the corner. Leave the bounce well enough. Rapid City in the last 16 for the third consecutive year. a goal past Southall in any circumstances, the way the Everton goalkeeper is playing at the moment. It's something to be remembered for a long time, but Mark Leonard has plenty of other reasons beyond that. Sheedy, back from a calf problem. an ideal opportunity for Bradford City to rid themselves of the disappointments particularly of their defeat at Manchester City on Saturday and they two up with Ian Banks drilling it under Southall for the second division side. Leonard involved again. 
Mitchell cut it back to perfection. Banks tucked it in. Two goals in five minutes. Everton are rocking. And Bradford City are blossoming. Norman Groyd is offside. Ian Banks. Barnsley, Leicester, Huddersfield Town in his past. Always a solid player in midfield. Capable of getting a goal. Snowden. Nevin to the right. Evans out. Bracewell with the shooting chance. In the end, clipped it in. With Trevor Stephen and Sheedy to aim for. And possibly... Everton is still playing passes to Graham Sharp out of habit. And Sharp rehabilitating now after his hernia operation. But Watson is the big man up for the corner. Tomlinson, a charge off his line, back from the call. Stuart McCall was quite a useful goal scorer from midfield for Bradford City, but Everton have rather reined him in and restricted him in the centre of their midfield. He's only got one this season. And Everton badly needed number two here. He hit it well enough, but it was always rising. Palin. in the centre again and set up the third goal and you wonder if there was any way back for Everton and it very nearly arrived Banks unable to reach it that time Sinnott did McCall, Vanden Howe, across comes Leonard. And then a blast on the half-time whistle. Bradford City, so concerned about their form in the league, have come alive in the Littlewoods Cup. Two goals in a five-minute spell. The second from Ian Banks. And the first whisper it around certain sections on Merseyside from an Everton fan and a former Everton player, Mark Lennon. At half-time at Valley Parade, it's Bradford City 2, Everton 0. Introducing John Hogan, the singing sensation of 1988 with the superb new album, My Feelings For You, on KTEL. I'll always remember her first day at school. It was so hard to leave her there. I'm a big girl now, Mummy, she said. Everybody loved her. He drove through the red light, straight into us. He'd been drinking. To me, that's as bad as murder. I'll never forgive him. He's taken my baby away forever. <laughs> Neil, your lab's been testing bleaches for us. What's the verdict? You mean which killed germs longest in the lavatory? Yes. My test did find the winner which killed germs longer. Look at these samples. We took them from lavatories after a number of flushes. Here's the bleach that came second. Germs are beginning to breed again. But the winner is still killing germs. Care to name it for us? It's Vortex. In these tests, Vortex killed germs longer. That's a scientist's verdict. Remember when we compared Fairy to four of the other best-known washing-up liquids in the country? And remember, we found it did all this extra washing up. Well, it doesn't do this much extra anymore. Why? Because it's been improved. It now lasts even longer. So, one small bottle now does even more. All this much more. In fact, enough for the home team and the visitors. 
So now it's even better value. Fair has always been the best, but now the best is even better than ever. Mum, it's Melvin. Look, I'm afraid we're gonna be late. You're gonna be late? He's gonna be late. Sister's never late. Your father says your sister's never late. She got more consideration. I've got to work. He's got to work. I'll tell you this. They're working you too hard. They're slave drivers, those people. I'll be an hour. I'll come down. I'll bring you a sandwich. Your father will run me. I don't you want run a sandwich. me. Eat there. No sandwich. I'll bring you a jumper. I don't want a sandwich. I don't want a jumper. This is a modern air-conditioned building. It's never easy explaining why you're late, but a call shows you care. You never told me it was air-conditioned. Why would I tell you? Melvin, some children talk to their parents. Now, what do you want in your sandwich? I got that matured Canadian cheddar that you like. I wish I'd known. I haven't got a lot in. Still, thanks for the call. British Telecom. It's you we answer to. Enter Kennedy Wolferdon's World of Antiques. See our selection at 218 Lisburn Road, Belfast. Kennedy Wolferdon Antiques. Listen and learn. Free parking, shops galore, open six days and late night Friday. You'll love lively learn. You've listened, now learn. See over 50 different models of electronic keyboards. Call at Marcus Musical Instruments, 113 North Street, Belfast, for all musical instruments. This seconda is exactly right by Greenwich Mean Time. That's no good. I want Greenwich Expensive Time. <laughs> Bradford City, 45 minutes away. They hoped from a place in the quarterfinals, a stage they reached in the Littlewoods Cup last season, and they lost to Luton Town. And Ian Wilson comes back on crutches to watch the second half. McCall, Nevin. Behind Sinnott, who used his longer legs to block the attempted cross. David Evans, who only played two First Division games for Aston Villa, his first club, his first, his league debut was against Everton. Here he is trying to keep them out in the Littlewoods Cup. come for McCall and a second time outside of the post the former Bradford City star so close to a goal against the club he served so splendidly here and really connecting well McCall but it thudded against the post and rocketed back past him but Palin then. Banks buying his side some time. And that's a great pass. Right to left, Banks to Kennedy. Palin going in! It's a wonderful goal on a wonderful night for Bradford City. Seven. 
70 yards to get there. But Everton have to take all the risk going now. And Ratcliffe has played Leonard onside. The first run was made by Ormondroyd, but it was too far ahead even of his telescopic legs. Mitchell got there, and it was a good effort on the run. Ormondroyd. Leonard. across the face of the goal a whisker away from number four it's an impossible situation for Everton Palin pushing the header down for Kennedy Ormondroyd is onside, he was a little slow to realise it, but it was the crowd's reaction that told him. Leonard has been joined by Mitchell in the centre. As Bradford City engage in a spot of keep ball. Not very successfully. Sheedy. And now at the gallop. Cotty was coming in. Tim Redfern, in fact, initially pointed for the goal kick, but the linesman, I think he got it absolutely right. And Vanden Howe's cross. Evans ducking in and against his own bar. Everton had played simply for pride, really. In the second half, and Watson! one back that was the most likely route 3-1 less than five minutes remaining and it came over Leonard and Watson was up the highest and directed the header perfectly Bradford City in no hurry to get the game restarted Is some reward for Everton's professionalism. Watson back in his more orthodox place. Everton trying to strain Bradford's nerves. And what little time that remains. Snowden. Ratcliffe. Here's Nevin with a run at Kennedy. Ormondroy trying to provide some cover. Sheedy played away by Banks into the run of Mark Leonard. Evans, Mitchell's onside. Everton short of cover. Palin in the centre. Ormondroy two. Is it measured for him? Oh dear, he thought about a diving header and in that moment lost his balance, decided to control it with the foot. And the control was poor. Banks. Well, the crowd were hoping then that the home side would have the final word. That could still rest with Everton. GD. Stephen. Potty joined by Vanden Howe now in the centre. McCall. Here's Vanden Howe. Sheedy. Oh, that's a brilliant effort. And Everton really know now that it's not their night. Had this been 3-2. Who knows how Bradford would have coped? Free kick taken quickly. 
Rashidi. And Tomlinson just had enough time to get along his line to keep it out. victory to celebrate by three goals to one the third from Lee Palin will live long in the memory really made sure of it 12 minutes into the second half Everton another of the Giants have gone out in this season's Littlewoods Cup Bradford celebrating reaching the quarterfinals for only the third time and with third division Bristol City next on the horizon they have a great chance to go even further as they go off to celebrate we confirm the final score it's Bradford City 3 Everton 1 Terry was that according to plan uh, well, we're delighted that we scored three goals. Uh, I was a bit upset about their goal, um, but uh, we've not done badly tonight, have we? How have you done it, given that you lost 4-0 at Manchester City with the same team only a few days ago? Well, it's the old saying, that's football, isn't it? I mean, we've been playing something like that for the last seven or eight games, and the breaks haven't been in our way. But tonight we scored three brilliant goals, and uh, they've hit the woodwork instead of it going in. Do you think you proved something to Everton tonight? Not particularly, no. I think I proved something to Mark Leonard tonight, that was all. But you can do it against First Division opposition? Yeah. Uh, very happy with the performers. Me and Ian have been developing a very good partnership up front. And we played against two of the best of the business tonight. Uh, I thought we did very well. Tremendous team performance and totally deserved the result. And now Bristol City, a third division team in the quarter-finals. That really must whet the appetite for a genuine cup run. That's right. I think that's what spurred us on tonight. Uh, the fact that we had such an attractive draw in the next round if we got through tonight. Uh, obviously, at the moment, the league is the priority. We've got to get ourselves out of this false position in the league. Uh, but we'll think about it two or three days before it arrives. And obviously, uh, Wembley, three games away. Well, you couldn't ask for much more from a cup tie, could you? Unless, of course, you're an Everton fan.